The federal government on Thursday began uploading the data of 60 terrorists and other criminals to the International Criminal Police Organization's database. The terrorists and the other criminals were among those who escaped when a terrorist group, the Islamic State of West African Province, bombed the Kujay Correctional Center on Tuesday night. Meanwhile, the Ondo State Governor, Rotemir Kuridulu, has raised the alarm that terrorists are moving southward to take refuge in the forest. He retreated that uh, he retreated the need for the creation of state police to ensure security lives uh, and property. Now, Akoda Lupon said out that Nigeria police force is overstretched, understaffed, and lacks the capacity to adequately secure the people. And joining us to discuss this is uh, Honorable Riwa Shaolu Kuem, uh, Kewum, I beg your pardon. He's a member of the House of Representatives, and of course, he represents. Uh, uh, constituency in Taraba State. Now, uh, it's good to have you join us, uh, Honorable. Thank you very much, my dear. It's really interesting that um, this conversation has continued to linger, even though it happened on Tuesday. Um, it's reverberating every other day. Now, let's start by the fact, uh, looking at the fact that two events took place on that day. Many people have, pundits have said that um, the attack on the president's advance team was a distraction strategy uh, to get to the prisons to free these so-called terrorists. Um, and this is not the first time we've had prison breaks. We've had so many. We've had in Kogi State. We've had in Rivers. We've had even in Lagos State. And, and one would wonder, why do we keep having these things play out again and again? Do we never learn from the past? Well, I don't know whether it is because we don't want to learn or because our institutions have actually collapsed uh, and we are living in denial that we need to do something very drastic to get Nigeria back on track. You see, uh, the high-profile attack on the convoy of the president as well as the attack on Kujay actually cover a lot of horrendous things that are taking place in the country. The daily killings by Fulani militia or headsmen have continued. In my home, in my constituency in Taraba State, the last few days, a large number of people have been killed. Several villages have been ransacked. Uh, at, the, at the same time, we had about terrorists asking five villages toasted to evacuate. We've had soldiers killed in Shiroro area. So a lot of crisis is happening in the country, uh, which, which of course simply means that the terrorists or whoever they are, are far from being decimated or far from having been technically defeated, have actually regrouped or uh, have, no, have not even been dealt with in the first place and they pose a greater and more present danger to Nigeria now than before. Let, now, let's go to what um, the governor of uh, Ondo State had to say about this. Now, um, he spoke about how stretched, overly stretched, the um, security agencies are, especially the police, and them not having the capacity to protect us. And so I'm asking, why do we have a police force that's unable to protect us when this is their core duty, this is their core responsibility. And, and over, the, over the years, in fact, under President Buhari, there has been um, re-assigning um, of officers. We've also had 600, if not 6,000, uh, new police officers uh, recruited into the police force, even though we still understand that you know, we don't have enough manpower. But what do you think the challenge is in making sure that our security agencies are fully equipped and empowered, or are we using them for the wrong reasons? Uh, well, the fact of the matter is that the situation we have in the security system is that there is complicity from the very top, in my own, in my, in my opinion. The fact of the matter is that the police, the soldiers, act on instructions that are given to them. By the very evolution of the political society which the Nigerian state happens to be one, 
uh, we surrendered all our arms, our weapons of coercion and violence to the state with the belief and understanding in a social contract that the state will protect us. And the state protects us by having what you call uh, uh, the police, soldiers, and so forth, who are asked to go out. When things happen like this, the question is you ask, were the soldiers or the police instructed to go out and take some actions? In the National Assembly, the security agencies have come under very strong criticisms every day that they are not effective, they are not efficient, and so forth. And we've had challenges or questions about corruption and so forth. I do not want to deny, and I have no reason to doubt the fact that there, are, there could be, and there, are, there are certainly are a lot of issues of corruption within the security agencies. But these same security agencies of ours, the police that we have, the soldiers that we have, when they go out of Nigeria, they perform very excellently well in peacekeeping. As a matter of fact, it was Nigerian generals who coined the phrase, specifically General Joshua Dogon Yaro, who coined the phrase that became an international intellectual phrase. This enforcement from peacekeeping, Nigerian soldiers, the Nigerian army developed the concept of peace enforcement. Peace was enforced in Liberia. Peace was enforced in Syria alone. Meaning that our soldiers have the capacity to do what they need to do. But why are they not performing excellently well in Nigeria? My opinion, the first place to start is to ask the questions. Have they been given instructions to go and do what they need to, to do? Several places that communities in the Middle Belt have complained. Soldiers or security agencies patrol the main, they, they patrol the main uh, 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 roads. They don't go out of the main roads, and you have a situation where the Fulani militia or headsmen, who are now metaphorizing, metaphorizing or have uh, have metaphorized into uh, 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 bandits and so forth, operating in five minutes away from the main roads, far away from the eyes or the attention or the instructions of the security agencies to deal with them. So the first question to ask is that, have the soldiers and security agencies been given the appropriate instructions by the president? That is one. And the second level, I do agree with uh, uh, the, the fact that we are under police. We don't have enough security agents, agents or personnel in the country. The ratio, Nigeria has one of the lowest ratio of civilian population to people in, uh, to persons who are officially armed to keep peace a country that is in the type of crisis that we have i think on the index table we rank among the lowest but having said that we also have to point out the fact that if you look at it nigerian police we have our population is 220 million people uh, that is what our population is said to be. And we have about 300,000 or so, there are about policemen on the street. A small country like Germany, which has about 80 million people, has about 400,000 policemen on the street. If you look at our armed forces, our armed forces, the, if you put the total strength of our armed forces together, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army, we will discover that we don't have the armed forces, people that should be on the street to be doing what they should be doing. We don't have them. They are, they are not there. Mm -hmm. I doubt it whether uh, the creation of state police, good as it may be, will solve the problem. Simple reason. Most state governments cannot have a staff strength, civil service staff strength of about three to 4,000 or less. And they cannot pay staff salary. So the questions that people have asked that if you, keep, if you now allow uh, a state government to recruit 10,000 uh, policemen, train them and arm them, who is going to pay their salary? But you see, we have to balance up that there is need for local actions because having one police inspector general or to give instructions to over 300 people in locations that are far and diverse means that you are going to have several points of failure 
and you are not going to get the best. And that is what we're hap well, that's what is happening in the country so, today. So what do we because do? Because we saw gov a Governor Zulum saying to the people in his state, as a result of the fact that they have un been unable to deal with the insecurity, to say, arm yourselves. We, this is not the first time we've heard a governor who, who seems overwhelmed talk like that. We saw the same thing happen in Benue State uh, and, and in several other states. So what, what is the solution? We have the House of Representatives. We have the Senate. What are measures that need to be put in place? You're saying state police is out of the question because, of course, of the capacity of the different states. So what do we do? Uh, I mean, we have the, um, the paramilitary guys, the guys who seem to be um, like vigilantes of sorts in uniform. We have um, the ones in, in the southwest. We have the ones in the north. But we also have the ones that uh, are in the southeast, we, whom we really don't know what they're up to right now. So really, how can we control these people if we're unable to control our security operatives already? And talking about facilitating you know, the work that they do, that's another kettle of fish. So what do we do? Where do we go? Because terrorism is spreading faster as the clock ticks. So what do we do? Yeah, we have to go back to the very first contract that we signed. Or well, presumably, a uh, political scientist said the people signed with the state. The people surrendered their arms, their, uh, their, their weapons to the state so that the state will protect them. Now, look at this, look at this scenario. If we, don't, if we don't get the federal system right, we can never get the states right. Very simple logic. The fact of the matter is that if you look at the terrorists, that, uh, uh, the people that attacked the church in, in, uh, in, in the southwest recently, uh, surprisingly, the federal government came out within hours to say that they were Israel that went to uh, to attack the church. Very surprising that they knew that so quickly. But having said that, the fact of the matter is those people may not have been living in that state. They moved through different jurisdictions. Presumably, they may have moved through three or four, five states. So if uh, uh, Ondo State, for instance, uh, creates its uh, state police, and uh, Ekiti State does not have, uh, if Ekiti State does not have, if uh, 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 Kogi State does not have, the fact that Ekiti, I mean, the fact that Ondo has that will not even help Ondo at all. Because these terrorists, and that is what has happened around the world today, Terrorism, terrorism, people sit in very far places to plan attacks in different locations. And so, uh, you cannot, you, you, you still be say, saying that I'm going to create my own state police in one location will not solve the problem. Mm. The problem still has to be attacked, and that is the best practice from the federal system, from the federal system. Unless, of course, we, if we don't attack it from the federal system, you cannot solve the problem. For instance, I know of some state governors, like Taraba State Governor, government, uh, the River State Governor, government, had attempted setting up those forces. And the federal government uh, soldiers security simply came and stopped them and locked up some people. So uh, you have to, like to say, you have to sit down and write a global rules for Nigeria to be able to arrive at the solutions that we need to arrive. But are, are, but are our politicians ready to do that? Again, Nigerians are critical of the body language of not just Mr. President, but of course, politicians in general. Uh, let's not forget, um, we've had several of these cases spread across the country. The president always expresses shock. There's always one message from the Senate president or, or the speaker but then there's no action following through. Several pundits have also said, I've spoken with security agents, uh, uh, security experts who have said that these terrorists have continuously read the body language of the leadership of this country, hence the continuous attacks. And the Senate president said yesterday that this shows a total failure of uh, security agencies in this country and, of course, our ability to deal with insecurity. So where do we go from here? Well, I, you are being generous. The word in the, in the street today is that government is complicit in what is happening. 
How so can... by saying that government is not competent, you are actually being very generous to government. The fear on the streets of Nigeria today is that government is complicit in what is happening. Complicit uh, in what respect? People point to the fact that, number one, no terrorist has been brought to trial properly. All the killings that have taken place, even the few that were brought for to, to trial and uh, were in Kujé have, have miraculously uh, been let out of Kujé or let themselves out of Kujé. And people ask the question, if you are driving, for instance, from here, uh, from central area of Abuja to Kujé, you are going to pass so many checkpoints. Where were these checkpoints? People are also asking, government already knew that ISWAP attacked uh, the church in Ondo State. That means that government has information about the locations and where the ISWAP people are. What has the government done about it? How many of the terrorists have been arrested? How many of the terrorists have uh, are facing trials? So those are questions that people are asking. And the fact of the matter is that, yes, it is correct to blame uh, the National Assembly too, because the strength and the beauty and the efficacy of a presidential democratic system is that the legislature brings the executive to book. But in the last four years, three years plus, we, we in the National Assembly have said that anything the President brings, we will accept. Uh, we, everything that the President has, has, has asked for, every couple he has asked for has been given, including monies that were taken out of the account of the Federation before budgetary allocations were done. Now, there is nothing that this President has asked for that he has not got. So what is the problem? But is, is the yeah, House also making sure that the, the executive gives account? Because it's one thing. Nigerians also ask. We have so many security votes across the states of the Federation. The federal government also votes monies, monies, trillions, in fact, to, you know, fighting insecurity. And, of course, we haven't seen those monies. Is, it, is the onus not on national, the National Assembly to probe where these funds have gone to? looking at what is on ground right now and how many lives, how many more lives have to be lost in order for us to be able to come to a point where we say enough is enough. How long are we going to continue in this light? Well, I have said it. Uh, everywhere in the world, when people are tired of things that are wrong, they will rise up and they will change the wrong situation. I, by the time Nigerians get tired, truly, of what is happening, they will know what to do. The fact of the matter, too, I must point out is that a lot behoves on us who are in positions of authority to perform our duties properly with knowledge and without fear of favor. Part of what is foiling the crisis in the country and part of what is making different groups, disparate groups, to go into trying to protect themselves is the fact that the authorities appear to be biased or are seen to be biased to be protective of some people and to be unnecessarily hard on some people. For instance, with all until recently when IPOP started uh, killing people or alleged to be killing people, there was really uh, no violence that IPOP had, uh, 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 not, nothing that IPOP has said that some other groups had not said mm -hmm. and those groups were not banned it is IPOP that was banned. Well, if good you have banned IPOP, why are you not banning the groups that are threatening Brimstone also in other parts of the country? These are conversations that need to be had, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, but we want to say thank you. Uh, Honorable Rima Shawalu uh, Kwewum is a member of the House of Representatives, and he's been speaking with us. Uh, we appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much. All right. We have to go. And that's the show tonight to On Plus Politics. We're wrapping up for all of you who are celebrating uh, the holidays. We wish you a happy celebration as uh, Salah comes up this weekend. But I'll see you on Monday when we talk more on political issues across the country and across on the continent. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good night.